Hey y'all, Farmer Jesse here. Uh, I shot a video intro for this yesterday. I don't know what happened to it. I also had a beard. I don't know what happened to that either. And I had a kid this week. I do know what happened to it. It's inside. With Hannah. Anyway, let's talk KNF. Let's do it. Few quick things before we get started, I know, I know. First, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I think that one's pretty self-explanatory. Just click the subscribe button. Something like 60% of the people that watch our videos are not subscribed. So, subscribe, that helps me out, helps you out, probably. Next, over at the Patreon page, I'm going to be breaking down all of the preps that I've done for KNF. I am a one through five, all the five steps. Each number is just a new step in the process of collecting your own indigenous microorganisms, which I'm about to talk about. And I have broken all of that down for our Patreon members. So, go check that out. It's like $2 a month. Link down in the show notes, link here. That's not actually a link, you just go to that page. Last thing I wanna mention is a my article came out in Growing for Market about KNF this week. Actually, the day our kid was born. So, it was a good day. So go check out Growing for Market. You can get it digitally online, you can subscribe to the magazine, and you can read that article and all the other amazing articles that are in that publication. It's awesome, it's an amazing publication. Andrew Mefford is the new editor and he just does an outstanding job. Big shout out to Chris Trump for helping me with that article and helping me to kind of understand KNF. Also, Ace of Spades Farm, who have been doing a lot of work in KNF, allowed me to pick their brain about how they're using it. And then Brian O'Hara, who's coming out shortly with a book about KNF and biodynamics and no-till farming. So, look for that. Big shout out to those guys for mentoring me on this subject. Okay, so a little bit of history. Back, you know, in the 60s, there was a man named Dr. Cho. And what Dr. Cho was seeing was a lot of farmers going towards chemical agriculture and finding a sort of dependence on it there in South Korea. And that dependence was cutting into the farmer's profitability and it was also poisoning the land. And there were lots of reasons that you wouldn't want to see your fellow farmers becoming dependent on chemical agriculture. Dr. Cho's sort of idea was that you could get all of the nutritional needs you have met from things on the farm. So uh, eggshells for calcium or compost for nutrients, maybe microbiology that was good for your environment to help your plants uh, better, more efficiently photosynthesize. So anyway, all the science aside, essentially what he was saying was that we didn't need this reliance on these chemicals. We've got all this stuff around. So let's figure out how to use it on our property so that we're not having to rely on these, you know, on these companies and these chemicals. And that goes for fertility and that goes for, you know, bugs, insects, pests, uh, it goes for calcium, phosphorus deficiencies, any of these, it goes for a lot of different stuff. So combining that idea with the sort of Korean penchant for fermentation, I mean, kimchi, y'all, it's delicious. Dr. Cho sort of invented this Korean natural farming. So here's what it looks like in practice. In Korean natural farming, the focus is really on indigenous microorganisms. These are organisms that are indigenous to your environment. Makes sense. So we've all heard of these sort of agricultural microbials, different microbes that you'd put in your soil that are good for various, you know, things. And, and there is some evidence to suggest these sort of bottled microorganisms that you can buy are good for your soil and they do increase plant productivity and those sorts of things. Korean natural farming takes that one step further by saying instead of buying in all of these organisms, you're gonna encourage the ones that are already adapted to your environment in your soil. The advantage there is with these, these sort of bottled microbials who often get a fall off, right? They work maybe for a year, you have to regularly apply them, and in the spring you reapply them because they're not adapted to your climate. They're kind of cultured in the same way that a shiitake mushroom or an oyster mushroom is not gonna be as strong as a wild shiitake mushroom. They've lost their wildness in a sense. With these IMOs, these indigenous microorganisms that you collect through the KNF process, you get microorganisms that are adapted to your barometric pressure, they're adapted to your, to your climate, to your temperatures, to your rainfall. These are ones that already know they like it here. So that's the idea, is that you're getting organisms that already enjoy this environment. And there are several different methods for collecting the 
indigenous microorganisms and different organisms within that. So there's like a fermented plant juice preparation that can be used for a number of different things to sort of feed the nutritive cycle of the plant. So when it's fruiting, you have things that are sort of encouraging the fruit. And if, when it's flowering, you have things that are sort of encouraging good flowering. Got an itch. And then you have the IMO itself. So like I said, I kind of break down how to collect indigenous microorganisms over at our Patreon page. Chris Trump has also put up videos. You go check those out. He's done a great job with it. I did it for our region here in humid Kentucky and also talk about how to adapt it to your region. But essentially you're taking rice into the woods, into like old growth woods, and you're collecting the microbiology that hasn't been tilled up, is, is really well established, and you're bringing that and putting it in your garden. This is mycorrhizal fungi, this could be bacteria, but you're taking these organisms of inoculating your farm and your garden or your pastures or your trees with these organisms in a way that your plants and your climate is already ready for. Oh, let's go dude, dudes. What's up, buddy? And I love this because it plays really well into the no-till thing, right? Like if you're encouraging these microorganisms and you're getting them sort of installed into your soil so that by not tilling them, you're giving them the environment that they're used to maybe with nice coverage like it was in the woods. In so doing, you're allowing that microbiology to sort of spread and propagate. And as long as you're keeping plants growing in the sort of everbed system I talked about here, you're keeping them growing, you're keeping them alive and you're not having to re-inoculate every year with that organism that you're buying, right? So there's a lot of those kind of things that play into the KNF. You know, it's a lot about the microorganisms, but it's also about that nutritive cycle. So there's a lot of different preparations in KNF that uh, encourage, like I said, the plant growth, the fruiting, root growth, any of those sorts of things. And I think that's a, that makes a good segue into biodynamics, which does a lot of those similar things. So the question is, is it the new biodynamics? Is it better? Is it different? I honestly kind of think it's a good complement to biodynamics. And what I mean by that is you're encouraging biodynamics, you're encouraging a lot of really good microorganisms in various ways, but a lot of that is less based in the science. Now, that doesn't mean the science doesn't work out for biodynamics, but it's not based on the science of plant growth. It's based on these sort of esoteric lectures from Rudolf Steiner, which are really interesting, more about the cosmos and all of these things that are less about the biology. You have to remember, the, the, that was one of the last things Steiner did. It wasn't something he worked on for his whole life. I don't know if that's relevant. But I think it actually, if you can play KNF and biodynamics off of each other, you're really encouraging the right kind of microorganisms for your soil, and you're really propagating a, a biodiversity of microfauna, microbiology, and I think that's really cool. Yeah. I also think that Korean natural farming has the potential because it's more based in science. These are, you know, it, it has a lot of good studies behind it, and it was comes from biology perspective. And I think because of that, it has a lot of potential for bringing in people, sorry, Scooter, bringing in people who, you know, may be turned off by the sort of esotericism of biodynamics in the, all the talk of the cosmos and the ethereal and all of these things. I think that KNF can kind of bring people into the world of indigenous microorganisms in a more straightforward fashion. There's an increasing number of studies about KNF and the, effect, and the efficacy, and I think that that's, that helps for people who want to get into, you know, maybe propagating more of their own microorganisms or their own fertility, but maybe find biodynamics a little, you know, eh. and then maybe in so doing, it'll bring people around to the idea of biodynamics and how the moon affects plant growth and all those good things. So anyway, that's it for now. Like I said, go check out the Patreon page because I'm really breaking down those preps for our Patreon members. Otherwise, if you guys like this video, please like this video. Also make sure to subscribe, subscribe, hit the bell and hit the subscription thing. No pain, no gain of subscribers. I don't really think that made any sense. Also, if you have any questions about KNF, uh, you can ask me. I've studied it a fair bit for that article, but also check out Chris Trump, check out Ace of Spades Farm. I'll leave, leave all their links below. Look out for Brian O'Hara's book. I will almost certainly talk about it when it comes out, so be on the, be on the lookout. All right, thanks you all. See you later, bye.